Okay, we're in Bible in six, volume six of the Bible story, and I found out this uh, girl that's on the front in the yellow dress is Esther. In my book set, Bible stories, Bible story by uh, author S. Maxwell. Had to think for a second. Okay, we're at part three. Story 5, Royal Invitation. All the next day and the day after, Esther thought about what she should do. Suppose she was going to see the king. Would he welcome her? And if so, what would she say to him? How could she possibly persuade him to change his mind and alter his decree? Persian kings never have altered their decrees. It wasn't done. Then, too, Xerxes might be in a bad mood. He might be angry with her for coming to see him, and he might have her put in prison or executed. It was a terrible risk to take. Then she had a bright idea. Calling her maids, she bade them prepare a special, a very special banquet in her house. Then, putting on her royal robes and looking more beautiful than ever, she made her way slowly to the king's house. Presently, she found herself at the entrance of a great hall where Circe's was, Circe was seated on his royal throne. Placing herself where he could see her, she wondered whether or not he would hold out his golden scepter as a token of welcome. I've seen that part before. He did. Catching sight of his love, his love, lovely young queen, he smiled at her, bidding her to come close to him. As Esther touched the top of his golden scepter, he asked what he could do for her. Graciously, he offered to give her anything she wanted, even to half of his kingdom. Probably he didn't mean exactly that, but it sounds nice, and it was a custom in those days. Esther was ready. She had made up her mind to make a very simple request at first, one that the king could hardly fa fail to grant. She would just invite him to dinner. If it seemed good unto the king, she said very sweetly, let the king and Haman come this day unto the banquet that I have prepared for him. Of course, of course, said the king, and no doubt relieved that she wanted wanted so little of him and flattered at this mark of her approval of his prime minister. At once he sent messengers to tell Haman to hurry up and do as the queen had asked. Haman was overjoyed. This was the greatest reward he could ever receive. To dine alone with the king and the queen was an honor he had never dared hope for. That evening, the two men came to Esther's apartment where everything was beautifully prepared for them. They ate and drank happily together. Then the king asked again, What do you want, Esther? There must be something. There is said Esther with all her charm. I request that you will both come to dinner again tomorrow. Then I will tell you. Gladly the king agreed, but his curiosity was yet more. And then it stops right there on this page. And we have a painting by Herbert Rodin or Rudin. Let me show you what it looks like. And she's in a beautiful yellow dress. There it is. 
And like I say, it's not my camera. It's actually printing in this book. And there's the scepter being held out to her. Okay. The caption has, When the king held forth the golden scepter to show that he w she was welcome to court, Queen Esther touched it and asked the king and Haman to be her guest at the at a royal dinner. Interesting. Okay. Gladly the king agreed, but his curiosity was yet more aroused. What could it be that the queen wanted? Clearly she had something important on her mind. What was it? He must find out. As for Haman, he had never he had never been so happy in his life. Hurrying home, he called his wife, Zerish, Zerish, yeah, Z-E-R-S-E-H, and his closest friends, and reported to them all that had happened. In his excitement, he told of all the glory of, of, of all the glory of his riches and how the king had promoted him above all his prince and servants. Um, and now, to think of it, he, ad he added, the queen was has invited me to dine with her and the king twice in two days. I'll be, hap I'll be the happiest man in the world if it were for that if it weren't for that Malachi, Mordecai. He's the one man in the palace who refused to bow when I pass by. He makes me so angry I could hardly contain myself. Why bother with him, said Zeresh. Yeah, Zeresh. Why let one old Jew spoil your happiness? Get him out of the get him out of the way. Good idea, and his said his friends, have a gallows made, the the highest ever built in Shoshan. Then when you meet the king tomorrow and ask him to let you hang Mordecai on it, if he agrees, you can forget your troubles and. Go merrily to the banquet, and the and the thing pleased Haman, Haman, and he caused caused the gallows to be made. Okay, just automatically went in James. Okay, eighty six feet high, he made it high enough so that all the city could see his hatred, his hated enemy. Dangling from it. Ooh, that's all. Hmm. But he built it a little too soon. And then it has a picture of them at the dinner and then him with the gallows. There's two paintings. Okay, this is the one right here of them eating dinner. At Esther's apartment, and then this one is the gallows. Haman's right here, and he's, you know, see how tall it is. And they say 80 feet tall. That is taller than some of the buildings we have here. Okay, and guess what? That was the end of part three, story five. So we're going to. I'm going to do what I always do, break, and then we'll see what else happens. Give me a minute.